Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I will focus my comments not on the content of this bill, C-16, but rather on what I believe is deeply flawed, undemocratic process that has returned this bill from the Standing Committee on Justice and Human Rights to Parliament without hearing from any independent witnesses. Mr. Speaker, I'm supportive of any initiatives that help protect persons from hate speech. I also absolutely agree that there can be no tolerance for bullying or violence of any kind for any reason. Parliamentarians and all Canadians have a responsibility to do their part to confront bullying, hate speech and violence. My concern is that dissent of any kind will be construed as hate speech and could subsequently lead to human rights tribunal hearings or, yet, worse yet, criminal charges being laid. I'm concerned that this bill will cause fear for many Canadians, fear that they will not be able to even discuss public policy issues such as this one because they disagree with this government's imposed agenda. I believe this government and the Minister of Justice directly owes Canadians a clear answer to the following question. What will the impact of implementing Bill C-16 be on what immigrant groups and faith groups who may be at odds with gender fluidity concepts? Will they have the freedom to teach their children and practice their beliefs without being accused of hate speech or being accused of human rights violations? Yes or no? Any law that limits legitimate discussion and debate of closely held beliefs presents a danger to freedom of expression, a fundamental value held dear by people across the political spectrum. The right to disagree is sacred to freedom in our society. It is the lifeblood of both new ideas and age-old protections. The United Nations Decla Declaration of Human Rights, Article 18, 1948 states, everyone has the right to freedom of thought, conscience, and religion. This right includes freedom to change his religious or religion or belief and freedom either in community with others and in public or private to manifest his religious or belief in teaching, practice, worship and observance. For myself and millions of other Canadians who acknowledge the supremacy of God as the first words of our charter affirm, there is the reality that our faith journey is the foundation of our worldview. Freedom of religion is a fundamental right. And so it is of paramount importance that Bill C-16 does not infringe upon that fundamental freedom. Today we are debating at third reading a bill that proposes some very fundamental changes to definitions and principles of society. The imposition of a fundamental value system change of this magnitude must be given complete due process here in Parliament. Mr. Speaker, this government promised transparency, openness and accountability. They, they, they assured Canadians that things would be done differently. All members of this House are aware that the normal course of action for a bill that passes on second reading is to send it to the corresponding committee for study, calling of witnesses for input on the content of the bill with the potential for changes or amendments to be made before it comes back for third reading and a final vote by Parliament. Yet here we are, asked to vote on a very substantive bill without the benefit of committee discussion notes or the transcription of witness input to inform our decision. Government has cho chosen to shortcut the democratic process, a different approach for sure, but not what Canadians should expect or have to tolerate from their government. This is a total disrespect of due process. Those who may see this issue differently are simply being shut out of the debate. Of all the places that should encourage dialogue and debate, certainly Parliament should be at the forefront. Yet here we are choosing not to have an honest debate for fear that we might somehow upset the politically correct apple cart. We have unfortunately already witnessed this chill on free speech at the University of Toronto as Professor Jordan Peterson is under constant attack for his refusal to use gender neutral pronouns. Medical experts have lost their jobs, not because of scientific knowledge or experience, but because their views are out of step with current thinking. As Irene Ogrizic of Montreal wrote, if Canadians who believe that gender exists on a spectrum are free to choose their words and their reality, Jordan Peterson, as someone who interacts with them, has a right to choose his words in reality too, however objectionable that concept of equality might seem. She goes on to say, allowing one group to use freighted words like homophobe or racist or rapist to tarnish an individual's reputation without proof violates a principle of fairness that some of us hold very dear. 
If hate speech is to be expanded in our criminal codes, and in Canada that, that seems inevitable, I suggest we include the egregious misuse of these accusations too. If we are to take the idea of diversity seriously, we can do no less for those who are falsely maligned." End quote. So I ask again, will parents continue to have their right to teach their children in accordance with their deeply held faith beliefs? Or are they, will they be subjected to accusations of hate speech for simply living out tried and true principles which are informed by their belief in the supremacy of God? Again, let me point out, as affirmed by our Charter of Rights and Freedoms. Will faith leaders who teach their congregations to follow the principles clearly laid out in God's Word, will they also be subjected to accusations of hate speech? Or will they be free to continue to practice with freedom as the UN Declaration of Human Rights declares? I now echo the Right Honourable John Diefenbaker, whose view of Canadian freedoms expresses what we should all hold dear. I am a Canadian, a free Canadian, free to speak without fear, free to worship in my own way, free to stand for what I think is right, and free to oppose what I believe wrong, free to choose those who shall govern my country. This heritage of freedom I pledge to uphold for myself and all mankind. Mr. Speaker, in closing, I move, seconded by the member for Sarnia Lambton, that the motion be amended by deleting all the words after the word that and substituting the following. Bill C-16, an act to amend the Canadian Human Rights Act and the Criminal Code, be now read a third time, but be referred back, be not now read a third time, but be referred back to the Standing Committee on Justice and Human Rights for the purpose of reconsidering all of its clauses with the view to hearing from witnesses in relation to the impact of the bill on freedom of expression. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. The, uh, the amendment is admissible. Um, Ms. Uh, Wagenthal, uh, seconded by Ms. Gladu, uh, that the motion be amended by deleting all the words after the word that and substituting the following. Uh, Bill C-16, an act to amend the Canadian Human Rights Act in the Criminal Code, be not now read a third time, but be referred back to the Standing Committee on Justice and Human Rights for the purpose of reconsidering all of its clauses with the view to hearing from witnesses in relation to the impact of the bill on freedom of expression. Questions and comments? Question and the Honourable Parliamentary Secretary to the Government House Leader. Yes, sir, thank you. Uh, thank you, uh, Mr. Speaker. And um, I'm a little bit uh, surprised that the member had chosen to introduce an amendment. I know there's been a fairly wide expectation uh, that the legislation, uh, having gone through committee, uh, has set in a certain amount of expectation that we would hopefully be able to see uh, the bill pass uh, in a timely fashion. Over the years, there's been a great deal uh, of effort by a wide spectrum uh, of stakeholders, uh, people very passionate about it. It's been debated extensively uh, inside, uh, inside the chamber. Um, and my question to, to the member is, uh, do, does she uh, feel uh, that her, her amendment uh, will ultimately uh, do well uh, in terms of just trying to, to advance uh, what has been a very strong issue, a very passionate issue inside this chamber for a good period of time, as many people seem to want, uh, including the government of the day, to have the legislation ultimately passed? The Honourable Member for Yorkton Melville. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I appreciate the question. This House deals with a lot of very passionate issues that required, uh, even in this House in the last few months, an awful lot of conversation in this House and also at the committee level. 
And so my concerns, I hope I've made very clear, are not in regards to um, the rights of the, the individuals that are being presented as, as the root cause of this bill. My concern is that we hear, and it's made very clear within this House and through committee with witnesses, that the rights of all individuals in Canada to have freedom of expression, quite honestly to have a bias of opinion because we differ, to have that opportunity and to not be facing any kinds of uh, criminal uh, accusations because of expressing that freedom. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Questions and comments? The Honourable Member for Esquimalt, Saanich Souk. Well, thank you very much, Mr. Speaker. And of course, very, I'm very disappointed to see this uh, amendment come forward at this late date. Uh, in committee, of course, only one person voted against the bill. Uh, so it was, again, not a partisan manner. And we had a, a long discussion about the fact that there had been three sets of public hearings uh, on the Hill on this bill and that those transcripts are available to all members. On the question that she specifically puts in the amendment, it seems passing strange to me that her amendment doesn't include removing religious freedom for, uh, from protections against discrimination or gender or uh, race because the argument she's making would be, could be made exactly in the same manner, that we can't have those in the Human Rights Code because people might not be able to believe things about race or might not be able to believe things about relations between men and women. Obviously, it has not had those impacts. It has not affected free speech uh, of, of those groups. And how is, in fact, uh, the question of transgender and gender varied rights any different than the other rights which are already in the, in the Canadian Human Rights Commission and in the protected section of the, the Criminal Code. Member for Yorkton, Melville. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. And I do thank the member for his question. I know that this is disappointing to, to uh, him and many others in this House at this point, but I feel it's my responsibility. Um, quite honestly, um, the, the member uh, from Esquimoth, Sanak Souk, and I were at an event where the, uh, the Minister of Immigration presented what was happening with the movement of Syrian refugees to Canada. And I was pleased to support him when he stood up and asked the question, uh, there will be a gay community we know coming over as, as uh, refugees to Canada. How can we as the gay community here know who they are and be available to them to help them to settle and assimilate in Canada? And uh, the minister responded that he didn't know exactly who they were or when they would come, but they would certainly make sure that they had that opportunity which I applaud. And then I got up and asked the question um, of the minister, could he clarify for me who the Christians were that would be coming over as part of that Syrian refugee group so that the Christian community in Canada could do the same? To which he replied, well, I would hope that all Christians in Canada would be accepting of all refugees coming to Canada regardless of their faith. To which I replied, Absolutely, of course. Look at our record in Canada of being there for refugees of any faith, uh, background, whatever. But I said, that's not my question. My question is, can we identify those people? At which point it was made clear that uh, over the course of time that ethnic and religious minorities were not the pri priority of this government. I had a wonderful conversation with the member afterwards thanking me uh, for uh, supporting uh, the gay community coming to Canada, I said, you know what, no one should die or be uh, inflicted in any way for their beliefs or their perspectives. He said they had to set up separate camps for them because they were being attacked and killed. I made the comment that Christians were not even making it across the water, they were be being thrown off the board before they got there. To which he replied, I don't want to argue. To which I also replied, neither do I. All I want is fairness, and that's what I'm asking for with this amendment, with this motion. Questions and comments? Kessler uh, Kamantaya. Uh, the Honourable Member for Churchill, Kiwatinuk Aski. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. And uh, while there's no question that uh, as parliamentarians we value a healthy debate, uh, what we must also be very clear about is, uh, uh, is the attempt that we're seeing here to, uh, to truly stand in the way of a, uh, a, a minority community in Canada uh, that has experienced some of the highest levels of violence because of who they are. 
Mr. Speaker, it is 2016, and as my colleague from Saanich, uh, um, Esquimalt uh, Saanich Sook, has explained, this is the only community that has had to come, uh, whose issues have had to come forward three times, whose voices have had to come forward three times to be able to change legislation to protect their fundamental human rights, the human right to safety and security. So, Mr. Speaker, when I hear, uh, uh, you know, attempts to, uh, as we've seen today, uh, to to block. Uh, this community from achieving uh, the, the protection that we all deserve and that we all have, uh, uh, it, uh, it truly saddens me in terms of the state of, of, uh, of certainly Parliament and, 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 and the way we perceive our work in this place. Well, member for Yorkton Melville. Thank you very much, Mr. Speaker. The, the essence of what I'm saying here is being lost on the member because at this point, it is not about what they are looking for. It is about a balance and a confidence across Canada that everyone's rights are going to continue to be protected. And I know we, uh, my, my, my fellow member in the House from my own side of the, of the floor, when speaking about the protection of parents to have the right to determine to teach their children, to be in the public square, to share that in, in whatever circumstances. She said, I don't think that will happen. I'm sorry, Mr. Speaker. That's not solid enough for me. I want to know that this House supports the rights and freedoms of religious belief as strongly as ever, and I want to see it in, in witnesses and this, this issue being help, dealt with properly within the House. Uh, questions and comments? Kessie Kamantaya, the Honourable Member for Sarnia Lampton. Mr. Speaker, thank you. Um, I want to be clear that, um, as I've said earlier today in the House, I am actually in support of C-16, but what I'm not in support of is um, due process not being followed. Uh, there's an example here where they can say, well, the committee, you know, you know took their majority and basically uh, decided to proceed. This is not the first time. That was done also on the national anthem, and I am against not following due process. And so that's my issue with respect to this amendment. I wonder if the member could comment. Member for Yorkton Melville. Thank you, Mr. Speaker, and thank you for the question. Thank you for bringing that back home, because that is truly uh, my concern as well, that we have a responsibility here. I understand that this has been discussed for a long time. There are a lot of issues before this House that have been discussed for a very long time. I have a responsibility within this House and to my constituents as well that we follow due process and that we have on the record the things that should be on the record. And again, like I said, that we have the opportunity to do that is why I put forward this motion. Questions and comments? Uh,